wonderful name of Jesus. Isn't it sweet? There's a wonderful sound to it when you think about Jesus. The Lord is salvation. That is the meaning of his name. And he is salvation. Praise his name. I'm so thankful there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And at that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. And I'm thankful that he is my Savior. I'm thankful to say today that I know he loves each and every person in this room today. He loves everybody that's watching my live stream today. He loves those who'll see this service on television later. He loves those who can never be a part of any of the aforementioned. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I'm thankful for Jesus. Amen. Amen. What a great way to start our service today. His name is wonderful. We're going to have a word of prayer as we get started this morning and ask the Lord to bless our service. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share this very quickly today uh, before we pray, and this will also give us a prayer reminder. This says, thank you, pastor and church family, for the support given to our family during the loss of our mother. She loved her church family and looked forward to being with you on Sundays. Uh, it meant so much, and this is signed Danny Branham and family, and I hope you'll continue to pray for the Branham family. We miss Miss Branham, amen? amen? Sweet, sweet lady, but we know where she is. She's with Jesus, and it's not over. We'll see her again, and I thank the Lord for that blessed promise, and I know the family is leaning on that promise today. So we'll continue uh, to be praying for the family, uh, and of course, I hope you'll keep uh, others in our church family uh, who are struggling uh, physically as well. Uh, I know uh, uh, pray, we need to pray for Brother Russ Wilson, uh, who just had knee replacement surgery this week. I hope you'll be lifting him up. He had his surgery on Tuesday. Uh, and then Miss Ellie McIntosh, uh, since last Sunday, has been moved uh, to a nursing home for a rehab uh, there. And uh, both these folks, along with many others, need our prayers today. So we'll go to the Lord and ask, him, and ask him to help those that can't be with us today and ask him to meet our need here this morning as well. Let's bow together. Father, we love you. Thank you for the privilege that we have to be here today. Lord, we thank you for the sweet name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for the love and the grace and the mercy that you've shown us. I'm thankful for the sacrifice that you so freely gave for us. With a thousand tongues to sing, we can never adequately praise you for all that you have done and been to us. Nor we thank you and praise you this morning. We thank you for this privilege to come together today and be in your house this morning. We are blessed to have such a place to come and meet and such wonderful people to come and meet with, and a wonderful Savior to glorify and worship. And Lord, I pray that you'll help us to do that in a way that is pleasing to you today. I pray that you'll help us to remember that you are a spirit, and they that worship you must worship in spirit and in truth. And I pray that you'll help us to do that today. I pray that you'd be pleased with our worship this morning. And Lord, we just confess today that we're mere human beings, we are vessels of clay, we are sinners, perhaps saved by grace, but nonetheless sinners, Lord, and we are limited, and we need your help to even glorify you and worship you in a way that you'd be pleased with today. I pray you would help us. And Lord, I pray you'll help me as I preach in a little while, I pray you'll help me to share something that'll be a needed challenge and help to our congregation today. Lord, I pray you'll continue to prepare our hearts as we move through this month headed toward our missions conference at the end of the month. And we'll thank you and praise you for all that you do with that. And Lord, we just pray for those who are not able to be here today. We have folks in our church family that we love dearly that are not able to be with us today. We're just so blessed today uh, that we are able to be here, but our hearts go out to them. We pray that you'll encourage them, them today. And we'll thank you and praise you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just before the choir sings, I wanted to say welcome back to Richard Walker. Good to see you about that, brother. We've missed you, and it's good to see you able to be back with us today. God bless you, friend.
than in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's take our hymn books and turn over to hymn number 258. Let's all stand together. Oh, how I love Jesus. Hymn number 258. that second. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his presence. Amen. The sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. seated. I want to go ahead and let our ushers come right now and we'd like to take an opportunity to welcome some folks uh, and thank you for being with us today. If you're here for the first time or maybe the first time in a very long time, we'd love to welcome you or welcome you back and thank you for being uh, in our services today. Our ushers in a few moments are going to make their way back and when they do we've got a couple of things that we'd like to get into your hands. One is a little book uh, that chronicles the many promises of God from the Word of God. Uh, categorized so that uh, at different seasons and times in your life you can find help and encouragement from the Word of God in the promises of God. God keeps His promises. Amen? He always has. He always will. Uh, and it's a blessing to be reminded that we have that kind of a God that we serve. And so we'd love to get that to you. We also would like to get a little uh, guest information card to you along with a pen. If you'd do us the great honor of filling that out today, that would be a help because we would like to get to know you better and we'd like to be able to thank you properly uh, for coming and being with us today. It's not lost on us that you could be a lot of different places and you could be at a lot of other churches today. And we're so glad you came to be with us this morning and uh, we'd love to be able to get to know you better uh, and become your friend if you'll give us that opportunity. So if you get the opportunity, if you would, take the opportunity to fill that out. And then at the close of the service today, as you leave, uh, Brother uh, William right here, 
Brother William, would you raise your hand there? I don't know if he knew it or not, but he's going to be back there today because Brother Brandon is in junior church. Uh, and uh, Brother William will have a special gift for you out in the foyer today uh, as you leave this morning. If you'll bring him that visitor card after you've had a chance to fill it out and give it to him, uh, he will make sure that he gives you a very nice gift, and we'll say some more about that at the end of the service today. But we want to thank you so much for coming and being with us today. And so when these guys get close to you, if you'll just lift your hand toward them and let them, that'll let them know that they need to give you those items. And gentlemen, if you will, you can go ahead and make your way back now. Thank you so much for being with us uh, here at SBT today. I uh, also wanted to make mention of a few upcoming things that you'll want to be aware of. Tomorrow is Low Country Fellowship, and that's going to be held up at Welcome Baptist Church in Union, South Carolina as Jerry Clower would say, way up there, amen. I'll warn you ahead of time, it's a two-hour drive if you plan on coming with us, uh, but we will be taking the church van up. Because it is such a long trip and it can wind up being a really late night, uh, we need to get back this time, so we will stay for the afternoon services and the meal, and then after the meal, uh, we are going to slip out uh, uh, from the meal and head on back. We're not going to stay for the 7 o'clock service that night, uh, but uh, because it is a pretty long drive and I don't want to get you in terribly late and I don't I'll be honest with you I don't want to get in terribly late this week if I just had one of those weeks and I'd like to get home this this Monday night at a decent time anyway uh, and so uh, if you would keep that in mind if you're interested in coming we'll leave the church here at 1 30 the meeting starts up there at 3 30 so 1 30 the van will leave the church parking lot here if you're interested in going uh, I want to say thank you to those of you who already have participated uh, by bringing bringing some school supplies in for our bus ministry kids. Uh, today's the deadline to get those in. If you've not already done so, you can still br drop those off after the service this morning or maybe uh, at the service tonight, uh, but uh, we are still collecting those items today. Uh, on Thursday, uh, Brother Brandon is going to be uh, uh, delivering those school supplies uh, and would love to have some help. If you'd like to come and help with that, uh, just let him know uh, and uh, he, will, uh, he will let you know how you can be a help with that. That's Brother Brandon Lynch, uh, our assistant pastor. And thank you again for being such a blessing uh, to, our, uh, to our kids that come to our bus ministry. Uh, also wanted to make mention of next Sunday. Next Sunday's Back to School Sunday. And we want to uh, honor our teachers that day, uh, both those that attend here and maybe if you've got a friend or neighbor that is a teacher, I hope you'll invite them to come. We'll have a special gift for them. We'll recognize all of our teachers uh, in the service next Sunday, and uh, we look forward to the opportunity to do that. I'm thankful for teachers. We'd be in a mess without them, amen? amen. We'd all be ignorant, <laughs> right? right. That, that is accurate, isn't it? Some teachers say amen right there. We'd, we'd be in a mess. We'd be like a dog chasing his tail if we didn't have teachers. Thank the Lord for them, and we want to honor them next Sunday uh, on Back to School Sunday. So keep that in mind. Also, looming large on our calendar, starting Wednesday, August 22nd, is our annual missions conference, and you might get the idea, looking around the room, we've got all the flags up, uh, and getting ready for a great week of missions conference. Uh, we'll have several missionary families here, the flags behind you. Uh, behind me will give you an idea of where we will have missionaries uh, to. We will, uh, uh, we've, uh, we've got um, uh, missionary families uh, coming in to be with us for the entire conference. All of our missionary families will get to be with us for the whole conference this time. And Brother Walt Schmidt is coming again to preach our conference for us, and we're excited to see him. I hope you'll pray for Brother Walt. Since you saw him last year, he's been through some very difficult surgery, but he, is, uh, he has healed well and is getting his strength back every day. I talked to him again recently and boy is he excited about coming this direction. I, I kind of tried to talk him out of it because of, the, uh, because of the fact that he had surgery earlier this year but he was having none of that uh, and they're really looking forward to coming over and being with us again so I hope you'll plan on being here uh, for all of those services. Hopefully in your Sunday school class today uh, you heard mention of the meals that we'll be having for the missionaries and I need to make mention of it today very quickly or at least as quickly quickly as I can. Uh, every night of the missions conference, uh, particularly I'm speaking right now of Wednesday through Friday night, uh, we will be feeding the missionary families over in the Family Life Center. Um, there are easier ways to feed the missionaries. We're not doing this for that purpose. Uh, we're doing this because I want you 
to be able to have an opportunity to meet, fellowship with, and spend some time with these missionaries that are going to be in our conference. And you'll be blessed for taking the opportunity to do that. I tell the missionaries on our first meeting on Wednesday afternoon, when we have those meals, you, you missionary families, don't sit with other missionary families. I want you all, all, all your families at different tables so our people can come and sit with you and talk with you and get to know them. Now, we don't want to be poor hosts, amen. We don't want to sit them out there by themselves. So that means we got to get out of our shell and go over there. These are ordinary people. I'm just going to tell you, if you'll spend time with them, you'll find it out. These are ordinary people that God just stepped into their life and said, I want you to do something extraordinary for me. And you'll be better off for having spent some time with them that week you'll be more likely to pray for them if the Lord blesses and we're able to take them on and support them in the future you'll be more likely to pray for them if you get to know them it'll be a great it's a great component of our conference uh, all of our adult Sunday school classes are involved in a particular night that their class is bringing the meal and so here's what we want you to do when your class is bringing the meal I hope you'll jump in and help uh, I know these are being organized on a class level so I hope you'll be willing to volunteer to help bring food and help uh, serve that night um, you are our church family I want everybody to come to these meals so you are welcome to come even on a night that your Sunday school class is not providing the meal but here's the catch I need you to contact that one of those Sunday school teachers in those classes and make sure and ask them if they need you to help with the meal that night so that we don't get too many people on a given night uh, for the food that we have prepared. Uh, and as long as you're willing to help them, you're welcome to come any night. Uh, but on those particular nights, those classes primarily are responsible for the meals. Then at 5 o'clock on Saturday evening, well, Saturday afternoon, we'll be having our missions banquet. We will not be in the auditorium that night. Everything we do will be over in the Family Life Center in the gym. We'll have the meal there. We'll have a service there. It'll be a briefer version of the service that we've had all weekend here, but you'll still get to hear from missionaries and so forth that night. It'll be a good time together over there for our missions banquet. So all that's coming up uh, very quickly, and we're looking forward to it. Again, I want to say thank you to our men. So many have gone over there and helped. Uh, Brother Tom, appreciate you heading that up and putting in so many hours over there. Our kitchen in the FLC is nearing completion and it's looking fantastic I'm really excited about the functionality of it and how it's all going to work in the days ahead uh, so things are on track we're headed in the right direction and going to be ready uh, for that missions conference there in the kitchen so I hope that you'll pray uh, and ask the Lord to work in your heart uh, and I hope that you'll be here in each of the missions conference services Wednesday through Friday those services will start at 7 o'clock uh, after the meals at 5.30 and then on Saturday we'll have the missions banquet that starts at 5 and we'll flow right into the service of when we're done eating there and then next Sunday all of our services are at the normal times uh, although we will have a combined well that Sunday not next Sunday but that Sunday the 26th we will have a combined Sunday school uh, here in the auditorium for all of our adult classes all the adult classes will meet in here that day so lots of stuff coming up it's going to be a great week I hope that you'll plan on being here for all of those services uh, and the last thing I wanted to mention very quickly this morning is as you leave today, uh, ladies there on the corner of the table in the foyer out there, uh, there, is a, there is, are some sheets. Uh, and what these are is an opportunity for us to kind of survey the ladies of our church and see what areas would you be willing to or would you like to serve in. Uh, a lot of times I've found that there are folks who would like to be able to be involved or serve in a church and they really don't know where or how they can use their talents. Uh, there's a questionnaire there that'll kind of help you understand, uh, help us understand if you'll fill it out, some areas that you might be willing and capable of serving in and it'll help us uh, uh, get more involvement. I've always believed many hands make light work. My goal in a church is not just to have a few people that I that I that I know I can count on that I run to for everything I want to see us as a body function together as a group and this is an opportunity uh, ladies you obviously don't have to fill that out but it would be a great blessing if you did there's a basket there you can put it in after you filled it out uh, and uh, over the next week or two if you would take the opportunity to do that uh, that would be a great blessing and a help to us so that we can help you get better connected in the work of your local church here 
Uh, all right, I need to do something that we delayed from last week. Uh, there's never a, there, it seems like there's, uh, there's always something in the service that says, hey, maybe we should wait a week, uh, and today's a busy service as well. But we missed birthdays and anniversaries last week uh, for the month of August, so we need to take care of that real quickly. Uh, not calling on you, but if you do have a birthday in August, and you'll admit to it, would you lift your hand let me see it today? Okay, got several around the room. You can put your hand down if you'd like to praise the Lord for the number of years he has given you on this earth. If you'll raise your hand, we'll call on you. Anybody? Right here. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's fantastic. Anybody else? Right here, Caleb. 20 on the 28. Fantastic. Got one down here. She'll be 12 on the 31st. Fantastic. Praise the Lord. Right over here. Amen. She raised her hand for Mark. Amen. Going to be 33. Anybody else? Right back here, Miss Linda. Fantastic. Praise the Lord. Anybody behind me? Okay, he's speaking for her up to a point. Yes, ma'am. Fantastic. Great to have you today, by the way. Anybody else real quick? All right. Maddie, you're being pointed to. I think you should make someone speak for you. Okay, thank you. They have to be trained, <laughs> but they can be taught. It's a wonderful thing. All right. Okay, let's move on to anniversaries real, real quick. If you have an anniversary this month and you'd like to praise the Lord for how long he's given you and your spouse together, would you raise your hand and I'll get to you. Brother Lee in the back. 31, 31 years. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Brother Lloyd. 53 on Wednesday. Praise God. That's awesome. Right here. 20 on Wednesday. Amen. Wednesday's turning into a popular day. All right, Brother Chuck. 41. Wonderful year. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Murray. 55. 55. might not have heard him. Dana said 42. Praise the Lord. All right. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Ten years. Amen. I know it feels very small after all those, but that is a lot of time. It's a decade. Amen. All right. Anybody else real quick before we move on today? All right. We need to sing happy birthday and anniversary to these folks. And then, Brother Chris, I'll let you go right ahead and lead our next hymn after that. Happy birthday to you, happy anniversary to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy anniversary to you. All right, let's go ahead and uh, turn over to hymn number 542, and at this time, those going to junior church, children, you go ahead and... Go to your class. You're dismissed at this time. Hymn number 542. Let's all stand together. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Hymn number 542. As the kids go. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to Oh. 
come and we'll get ready for the offering. I know they're going to have to steer around our choir. I apologize. You can go ahead and be seated. I apologize for us not being able to do our handshake time. We're just running a little bit behind this morning. And um, when you when your stomach starts growling a little bit, you're going to be thankful for that. You're going to say, man, I'm glad we, I'm glad we at least cut, cut that out. Amen. So we could get going. All right. We're going to have a word of prayer and we will ask the Lord to bless the offering today. Brother Ricky, would you lead us, sir? But I 
seeing brother chuck standing there i'm standing here in my gray jacket and my blue shirt feeling like i missed the memo or something <laughs> brother chuck not everybody can wear that coat i'm just saying right now <laughs> he makes it look good that's for sure amen Take your Bible and turn with me, if you would, to Mark chapter 16. As you do, I wanted to mention a couple of things. Uh, one thing I, I didn't mention during announcement time that I'll just say real quickly. September 22nd, uh, Matt and Casey are getting married, and we're excited for them. And uh, they're getting married over on base at the chapel on base, but they are having a reception here in the Family Life Center. And they wanted to let you know that you are invited to that, uh, to that reception at the Family Life Center that the, at the chapel uh, they're having a, a by invitation private ceremony there at the chapel, but uh, everybody at the church here is invited to that reception, uh, but they would like to know how many to prepare for. So on the table in the back in the floor there. There is a sign-up sheet. Uh, if you could take care of that this Sunday or next Sunday, if you're planning on coming, sign up there and let them know because they've got to order food, and they'd like to get that taken care of as soon as possible. Uh, so if you're planning on coming to that reception, they would love for you to let them know. Uh, Mark chapter 16 is where we're going to read in just a moment, but I think that what we're going to talk about today is probably put in perspective by sharing a little update with you. You've heard the saying that a picture is worth a thousand words, and uh, some of you would like for me to show you several pictures and then pray and go home today probably, but uh, we're go I do, uh, do want to start off with this today, and I think it will frame what we're going to talk about today uh, and, uh, very well and help us uh, to, to have a good reference point. Uh, last year, uh, we decided to do something we had not done in the past. Our church decided to uh, to uh, to support two foreign church planters. Uh, we helped them build their buildings. We uh, have we are supporting those preachers for three years while they get their churches started. And then at the end of three years, we back away, and they are to have their church self-supporting by that time. In some parts of the world, it's not that simple, and you can't necessarily do that or expect that. But in these situations, uh, we felt. Like the, that was a, a reasonable strategy, and we were partnering together with other folks uh, who, are, uh, who are already doing that and have accountability on the ground. Uh, there were a lot of things we wanted to make, uh, that we wanted to make sure were in place for us to feel good about doing this. Uh, and uh, I felt like as we're heading toward our missions conference today would be a good opportunity uh, for me to give you a little update on how they are doing. Uh, both, of, uh, both of those buildings are, are built, uh, uh, one I think is being uh, has got the finishing uh, touches being put on it. Uh, now, these are not buildings like we build here in the States, obviously. Uh, and thank the Lord we didn't have to spend what it takes to build a building in the States to help them build their buildings over there. But we really gave these churches a shove off and a good start. And I want to show you uh, some pictures from both of those. Uh, fellas, if we can go ahead and get the first of those uh, those pictures up. Uh, we have uh, we we've are, are helping uh, start churches uh, both uh, in Kenya uh, and also, uh, well, what used to be known as Burma, known as Myanmar now, uh, and uh, we're uh, as we're doing that, the, both of those churches are getting up, are, are are up on the ground now. They're having a problem with the pictures now. So if you get that taken care of, fellas, wave at me, and I'll uh, I'll find a I'll, I'll find a place to jump off later and use them. Okay, if we don't get them now, maybe we can do it at the end. Uh, but we'll show those to you as soon as we can. Right now, let me go ahead and let you read uh, uh, with me from Mark chapter sixteen. Notice, if you will, Mark chapter sixteen and verse fifteen. The Bible says, "And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature." 
the, the whole verse is important, obviously, but I think you get the thrust of what we need to understand today with two simple words. Jesus said to them, Go ye. Uh, that's a command, amen? And he gives further explanation when he says into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature after that. But the directive here is, is, is those two specific words to us that I want us to think about for just a moment today as we get started. Go ye. We're going to stop here and ask for the Lord's help today. Would you bow with me this morning? Lord, we love you and we thank you for the privilege we have to come today. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to be involved in the greatest business in all the world, and that is reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, so many times churches turn inward, and we begin to focus on our program and our organization, our fellowship and our business. And we forget, Lord, that, this is, that, the, that these churches, they're not our churches. Every New Testament church is your church. And it exists for your purpose. And Lord, the purpose is not inward focused. The purpose in your word is always outward focused. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to catch that vision as we head toward missions conference at the end of the month. I pray that you'll tune our hearts in that direction again today. And we'll thank you and praise you for what you do. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Here in Mark 16, 15, he tells us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. It mirrors the command uh, that, uh, that comes to us uh, from Matthew chapter 28, uh, 19 and 20. In verse 18 there, we're told that Jesus told them, All power is given me in heaven and in earth. And on the basis of that, he says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, And of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And, Lord, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. I hope that you already noticed that in Mark 16, 15 and in Matthew 28, 19, we see the same two important words. In both cases, we see, go ye. Go ye. No missions work gets done without somebody going. No evangelistic work on the local level happens or gets done unless somebody is willing to go. Missions is the heartbeat of God. World evangelization is the heartbeat of God. It is the desire of our God that every man, woman, boy, and girl on the face of this earth be exposed to the Word of God and the gospel message of Jesus Christ. God is not willing that any should perish, the Bible tells us, but that all should come to repentance. And while that is the desire of our God, and while it is a wonderful thing for us to talk about, us talking about it will never get it done in order for world evangelization to take place even for evangelization to take place at the local level the simple fact is this somebody has to go and the scripture says go ye and I truly believe today that that was not just a command to the disciples I believe by extension it is a command to us as well where the Lord tells us to go ye into all the world in Acts chapter 1 he says ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth God wants us to be witnesses at home he wants us to see to it that the witness goes abroad we live in times where that is more feasible and possible than at any other time in the world. Now, I understand that the task is great. I understand when we are well in excess of 7 billion and headed toward 8 billion people on this planet uh, that we've got a job to do. I remember preaching years ago when we were talking about that we were about to have 5 billion people on the earth. And already now we have advanced to the point where we're pushing 8 billion in population on this earth in the years to come. Uh, it, the, the job may be bigger than it's ever been, but we have more tools, we have more resources. When it comes to the going, I mean people uh, get on airplanes and fly around the world all the time now. It is a, it is a commonplace thing. And when we go, it, act, it absolutely yields results. And fellas, that's a good time 
time to break in there. Go ahead and put that back up on the screen. I saw you had it. Uh, we have a couple that these two churches that I talked about earlier uh, that we are helping plant. Uh, this is the one in Myanmar, uh, and uh, we uh, we we help them with money to help them complete their building. Uh, and you can see there is it still under uh, they're still working on it there, but have got it in the dry now and are able to uh, to use it. Uh, those mud puddles on the ground remind me of why we did it when we did it because we knew monsoon season was coming. If you'll notice in the next picture, there's another view of the building uh, as well from the uh, from the inside there as they're inside working on the, on the, on finishing out the inside of it. Obviously built very different than we build our buildings here, but absolutely serving the purpose. Uh, what uh, one of the things that I love at least in this picture is those chairs stacked up because they are symbolic of the people that sit in those chairs when it's actually set up for church services. And that church is doing very well. Uh, Brother Ong Fung is the pastor there, and you'll see him in a picture in just a moment. Uh, God is using them, and they're seeing many people saved. As a matter of fact, that's Brother Fung right there in the middle, and he is that he is uh, talking to a couple, and that is actually a couple that he personally led to Christ in their home uh, just a while back. The church is growing. They've got a good number of people coming, and God is doing a work there in, in Myanmar. Now, let me say this. I cannot go physically today to Myanmar because I am the pastor of Sumter Baptist Temple. But through worldwide missions, God gives us the opportunity to send an emissary, to send an extension of, to send an ambassador, to send a team member that has partnered together with this church to go and help us fulfill our responsibility to go to all the world and preach the gospel. Many people are being saved there in Burma today because of the of the the gifts and the prayers of God's people here in America. If we can move on to the next set, this is a particularly exciting uh, uh, situation here. Uh, this is the church in Kenya, uh, and uh, this is the pastor and his wife right here out in front of the church there. And uh, that this building was recently dedicated. They had their first services in it and had their dedication service, and it was was one of those banner days in a church's life that nobody that was there will ever forget. As you can see, the building was packed that day. I have some other pictures that were sent that were too small that would not that would not uh, show well on the screen. Uh, but but looking from the from the, um, the back, well, you actually you can see it there. There's a sunburst coming in the window, but you can see people beyond the door back there uh, where there were there were some on the outside as well. Uh, they're packed in there, uh, and uh, they had an amazing for, uh, uh, a dedication day there at the service. Now, I want to preface before I say anything else by saying that before these men got any money, can we go back a, 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 a picture please? Before, these, before we released any money for the buildings for either of these works, these men were already at work doing what they could, meeting where they could on the ground, and they already had a small, a small group of people in a church started before we helped them with these buildings. Uh, these buildings, though, have served as fertilizer and made things go uh, even greater. Uh, uh, even greater. What you, uh, you may not, well, maybe, maybe you can see, you'll notice that these folks are all holding a hand up. I don't know if you can tell it or not, but they each have a Bible in their hand. International Baptist Outreach Missions made sure that everybody that was in that dedication day service got a copy of the Word of God. They're all holding up their Bibles that have been given to them there. I'm happy to report to you that day, on that dedication day, they had 250 people in attendance uh, at that church. And we have been involved with this missionary, uh, 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 just just about, a, a, well, a little less than, I think, a year or just about a year now altogether, uh, and now they've gotten their building built and are going and are going like gangbusters. That's exciting. That's a blessing. Next picture is an even greater blessing. All those people that are standing at the front, that's the pastor right in the middle with his hands up there. All the rest of the folks in that, in that picture are people who trusted Christ as Savior on that dedication Sunday. They had 38 people trust Christ that day, and I thank God for the privilege. Praise the Lord. Amen. I thank God for the privilege of being a part of that. Now, this was a unique thing that we did. We also support American missionaries who are going to the foreign fields. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think there's a problem with doing both, amen. I'm for putting every hook in the water I can, and I believe there's more than one mission strategy that the Lord is going to use as long as it is a biblical strategy. And I'm thankful for the investment that we've made here. This is unique in the fact that no other churches are supporting these guys. The, the, we, are, we are the church that 
that has supplied for them to be able to preach for these next three years to get those churches started and to provide for those buildings. And there you see a picture of the greater crowd gathered together outside the building there on that dedication day. Now, I don't know about you. I, I, had, a, I had a chance to already, uh, to already see this. I, I just sat down at my computer a couple of weeks ago and opened an email, and here is all this information at me. And I just sat at my computer and wept. And thank God. Listen, folks, there are places in this world, it's not always like this. There are some very hard fields in this world, and we ought to reach out to them as well. Amen? But I will say this. There are some places in this world that all that's lacking is for somebody to get there with the gospel, and there are people who will respond to it. I mean, you're talking about an amazing thing here to us in America to think of 250 people being there in just a matter of, uh, of, less, uh, of, of less than or of just about a year and to see that many people saved in a day. But listen, all that, all that was needed was this was somebody that was willing to go to a place that nobody else was willing to go to. In that remote area of Kenya, listen, that, I'm surprised there are 250 people to come to that church. I've looked at it on Google Earth. There is hardly anything there. But they're, they're not elbowing anybody out of the way. Nobody else is getting there. There are no cults that they're trying to, uh, to, 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 uh, to have to silence or to get in the way of. Uh, we got there with the gospel and reached a people. There are people there in Kenya, in Tulianj, that that would not be going to heaven, that were headed to hell, that are saved today because of the work of foreign missions. I think sometimes we need to see a reminder and understand that there is a direct correlation between people being willing to go themselves, go through their giving, go through their prayers, go through their encouragement of those on the field, and there is a direct correlation between that and eternity. That doesn't happen if you don't care enough to give. It just doesn't. And so we thank the Lord for the fact that he says to us, Go ye. And when we obey that command, God honors it and does something with it. Now, having said all that, I'm going to give you the title of the message today, okay? This morning I want to speak to you for just a few minutes. Some of you heard me talk about it. I've been threatened to preach this message for two years. <laughs> I've, met, I've mentioned it before. I want to speak to you this morning on the subject, why we have to go. Why do we have to go? Why is go ye important? Why do we have to go today? This is God's plan. This is God's idea. Why did Christ say to us today, go ye? I've got to move very quickly because time is fleeting this morning. First of all, I want you to notice that I have to go. I have to go here locally in some... Tr- I have to go in other places. I have to send missionaries uh, that can go on my behalf. I have to go through them. I need, to, I need to support missions. I need to pray. I need to witness at the local level. I need to go, and others need to go. I need to help them go. Why is that so important? First of all, very simply, because it's commanded. The, best, the only reason you need to do anything in this world is God said so. Now, there are some other reasons. I can give you some more understanding as we go on today of why go ye is so important. But make no mistake about it. It's just like a young child. When a child is small, their powers of reason are, uh, and, and problem solving and understanding are developing. And if you wait until they can understand all the reasons why to teach them to obey, you have messed up royally. The most important thing you can do for a young child as they're growing up, beyond obviously loving them, but this is a part of loving them, is to teach them that the only reason they need to know not to do that is because daddy and mama said so. Why do I have to do that? Because I said so. Did you ever get that response from your parent when you were growing up? Now, I got news for you. If your kids are this big, when they're this big, that's not going to be enough anymore. You're going to have to do a little better than that. You're going to have to do some teaching and some explaining if you want them to carry those beliefs further into their life. They're going to need more than mom and daddy said so. But when they're young and they don't have the powers of reason and understanding uh, developed yet in their life, they just need to learn. I said so. That's why you don't do it. You and I know the car coming down the street will, will obliterate them. But they, they don't understand all that yet. That the, the, they, need to, they need to understand there's going to be consequences. You don't go near that street. And if for no other reason you need to know that I told you don't go near that street. As they get older and can understand more, we give them more. 
And I want you to understand today that the most basic reason that you and I need to do anything, and it's a good enough reason to do anything, is that God in His holy word said so. I remember four years ago, it's hard to believe it's been that long, but next month it'll be four years. Four years ago when God moved us uh, to Sumter, I remember the Sunday that I, that I uh, announced our resigna- my resignation to our church family over there, and we made a couple of trips back and forth uh, over here to, to, to preach and try to sort, uh, sort of start uh, getting uh, our feet on the ground a little bit, even though we couldn't, we couldn't move until September. Uh, but we finally did move uh, on over in September, and when I, after I announced my resignation on that Sunday at Madison Street there in Athens, Alabama, after I, after I uh, announced that resignation, I, I wrote up uh, a, a, a little, a little uh, I guess a, an article or a post uh, that I posted on my, my blog that I had at that time and then also to Facebook because a lot of our friends didn't know what had been going on. We had kept all this very quiet up until the point that we made it public to our church family. Uh, and I was just letting folks know what was about to happen and what God was doing with us. And at the same time, I was trying to help some folks maybe understand that, we're being le- that we were leaving behind why we were doing what we were doing. And I remember writing this line. I don't even have to go and look it up. I remember writing this line. I was telling them there was only one reason we were going, and that is because God had made it clear that that was his plan for our life at this time. We weren't chasing anything, and we weren't running from anything. We were following God's will for our life. And I made this statement. These are not optional considerations. These are orders from headquarters. When we came, we came because God made it clear that this was His will and plan for our life. Now that was after much prayer. That was after months of conversing and thousands of miles of travel back and forth and meetings and and preaching and candidating and all that went with that process. But I want to tell you today that you don't have to do all that. You don't have to pray about this. You don't have to counsel about this. You don't have to make thousands of miles of trips to make sure that it's the right thing to do. I want you to know today that God has already spoken and He has already weighed in on the matter and they're not optional considerations their orders from headquarters he tells every single Christian that's living and breathing today go ye go tell somebody go tell everybody the gospel of Jesus Christ that saved your soul I want your whole community to know I want your neighborhood to know I want your town and county and state to know I want your country to know and I want the regions beyond all the way around the world I want them all to know that I love them and that Jesus died for them and can save them it's not an option it is a direct command if we don't obey that command We are sinning against our God. We are disobeying Him. And while while we may not be able to go to all of these places personally, we must send those and go through them so that we can reach the world with the gospel. First of all, today understand this. We have to go because it's commanded. God says that's what we're supposed to do, and that is the main reason that we need. I want you to notice also today, secondly, that we need to go... Because we owe a debt. Because we owe a debt. Now, a debt is something that's supposed to be paid. A debt is an obligation to be met. A debt is something that, if it's not satisfied, is a huge problem. And the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 1, the Apostle Paul was speaking here, beginning in Romans chapter 1, verse 14, he said, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. He was basically saying, I, I, I'm, I'm in debt to the cultured and the not-so-cultured. To, to, to those that are refined and those that are not so refined. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also, for I am, ash- I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew, fir- uh, to the Jew first and also uh, to the Greek. Uh, the, 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 wor- the, the apostle Paul here says that I am ready to preach. Why? Because I am debtor to the Greeks and the barbarians. He said, I have a responsibility to fulfill. I've got a debt that must be paid. I've been told that I'm responsible to get the gospel to these people, and I now have a debt that must be reckoned. I have a debt that must be paid. I am responsible to see to it that they get the gospel. The Apostle Paul would also say in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 16, necessity is laid upon me. 
Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. You say, why is it that the Apostle Paul would would endure all those beatings and the imprisonments and the shipwrecks and everything that he went through to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out? Among other reasons, I know the love of Christ constrained him and we've seen that even recently in other messages, but I want to point this out to you too. He said, necessity is laid upon me. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul viewed it as his sacred responsibility. He had a debt to be paid. He wasn't going going to be right if he didn't do it. He said, I have to go. What else am I going to do? I'm going to have a debt that's not going to be reckoned, uh, that's, uh, that's not going to be satisfied if I do not go. Friend, I want to tell you there's coming a day when we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive a reward based on, to, re- uh, uh, to receive reward or the loss of reward for how we've built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And then eventually we're going to see, we're not going to stand before this judgment. But I'm convinced that we'll see the great white throne judgment. When people are brought before the God of heaven and when their names are not found written in the book of life and their sins are recorded in the other books there before God, they are cast into the lake of fire forevermore. Now friends, I want you to understand this. For everyone in our generation that does not have the gospel message, I believe that we bear some responsibility there. Uh, Some have even referred to it as having their blood on our hands. I don't know how many people in this world have not yet heard, but I'm going to tell you it's more than most people think. You'd be surprised how many hundreds uh, of, of language dialects do not yet today even have a copy of the Word of God in their language in 2018. Uh, it is amazing the task that is before us. And you can make, two, you can make a, a two decisions. You can either sit back and be overwhelmed by how great the task is and say, oh, well, we'll never get that done. And I don't think that there's, there's anything that I can do that's going to see to it that everybody gets the gospel in my lifetime. Or you can sit back and say, I don't know how many we'll reach. I don't know if collectively all of us working together we can get to all of them or not. But I'll tell you this, I'm going to reach as many as I can. I can't determine how many will get saved, but I can determine how many have access to the gospel message. Someone has said that no one should hear the gospel twice until everyone has heard it once. From a human fairness perspective, that seems reasonable, does it not? We live in the land where people are tripping over the gospel message all the time and there are still places in this world that do not have it. I'm telling you, Jesus says, go ye, and we should do it because it's commanded and we should do it because we owe a debt. This is what Jesus said in Luke 15. He said, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And that's exactly what Jesus did for us. The Son of Man, Luke 19. 10 is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus Christ is the original missionary. Amen. He left his home to bring hope to us. Now, I want you to understand tonight I have to go. I got to go to Sumter. I got to go other places around the world through men like this that we just saw on that screen today by helping them to be able to, uh, to, to reach their populations as well. I've got to go by sending missionaries like we'll have in our missions conference that are going to the countries represented by these uh, flags that are behind me here today. I've got to invest in them so that they can go in my stead because it's commanded and because I owe a debt. I don't, if you would, take your Bible very quickly and turn to the book of Ezekiel. I know our time's fleeting today, but I want you to see this. If you'll turn to Ezekiel chapter 22 this morning. Ezekiel chapter 22. And I want you, I want you to notice that there is, a, uh, th- there is another reason here why, we are going to, why, why we're going to see that it is important that we go. Because it's commanded, because we owe a debt... And then I want you to notice what is said in Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. The Bible says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, 
but I found none. God says, I'm looking for someone to stand in the gap to make up a hedge to give me the good reason that I need not to destroy the land and not to judge the people. But he says, I found none. None. It reminds me of when God went down to Sodom and Gomorrah. And he had, he had answered the prayer of Abraham. If there were ten righteous souls in Sodom and Gomorrah, he would not destroy the city. But the city was burned to the ground for lack of ten righteous souls. He says here, I sought for a man to stand in the gap and make up the hedge. It reminds me of what is said also in Psalm 12, 1, uh, where David says, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. Now, here is a popular theory that I hear people uh, uh, mention and, and some of the actions and attitudes that they have uh, sort, of, sort of reveal this attitude. There is an attitude among some that God's going to do what He's going to do. God's got His plan. And even if I don't go, it doesn't matter because God will see to it that somehow, some other way, they get the message. Let me give you a newsflash today. It happens every day and it will happen today. Listen very closely to what I'm about to say. Every day people die in this world without hearing the gospel message. I'll go a step forward and say this, a step further and say this. Every day people die without hearing the name or about the man, Jesus Christ. Now that may be hard for you to imagine here in the southeastern United States in the buckle of the Bible belt here in America, but it happens. And there is this belief, though, that it doesn't matter if I obey. It doesn't matter if I do it because God can do whatever He wants to. And if He wants them to hear the gospel, well, then they'll just hear the gospel anyway. He'll make some other way. It doesn't matter if I do what I am supposed to do or not. He said, I sought for a man to stand in the gap to make up the hedge and found none. If one man said, well, then it'll be all right because God will find another man, God says, no, I didn't find a man. I found none. David said, help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, the faithful fail from among the children of men. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17 as well. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning for me. And he goes on to say and to, and to detail that if the watchman did not blow the trumpet when the enemy approached, and the enemy was then able to overwhelm the city, that the blood of the city would be on the watchman's hand. God did not give us that illustration and that, and, and, and that narrative there so that we would, to, because it was not going to happen. He was saying it because it does happen. And the fact of the matter is this. He did not say that if the watchman does not blow the trumpet, don't worry about it, I'll find some other watchman somewhere else and somebody, some way, somehow will blow the trumpet. He said, no, if the watchman doesn't blow the trumpet, the city will be destroyed. And here's what I want you to understand today. That if I do not go, if you do not go, and if we do not send, there are eternal consequences. There are people that will not hear. Someone has said the gospel is only good news if it gets there on time. I've heard that said, and I remember the story that Dr. I heard Dr. Comfort tell many years ago of going to one of the European countries after the Iron Curtain fell in the, in the 90s and going over there and preaching in a place they'd not had the opportunity to preach before, and they took Bibles and gave them to the people there. And he said, I remember standing on the bus as we were about to leave, and we'd just given a lady a Bible that had gotten saved in the meeting, and she was an older lady, and she stood, and she clutched the Bible to her chest, and she said, Biblia, Biblia, Biblia. And as she did, so she uh, started speaking to him in her native tongue. I do not remember which country they were in. And the, the, the translator said to Dr. Comfort, he said, she said that she is thankful that she has this good news, but she is concerned for her husband. Because he has already died. And he did not hear this good news. And she is asking you, what about him? What happened to him? I can't imagine standing in that man's shoes 
and being asked that question. Because you and I biblically know what the answer is. There are only two options, placing your faith in Jesus Christ and being born again and going to heaven or not placing your faith in Christ and dying and going to hell. There is, no, there is no other passage in the Bible somewhere that gives us an asterisk that says, but if, or, 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 or maybe this. No, the, that is what happens, friends, and it is important for us to understand that we have to go because no one else will go in our place. No one else will go. I look at those two churches. You saw the pictures up there a moment ago. I thank God for those two men of God who not only responded to the gospel message and were saved, but they went to a Bible college there in their respective countries. They got training, and they have set out to plant those churches. And when they did, they had no guarantee that somebody was going to come in there and do what we did for them to help them these first three years. But they decided however hard they had to work and whatever they had to do that God had called them to preach and they were going to invest their lives in getting the gospel into their communities. I thank God for such men because I'm going to tell you, if those men hadn't done it, there was nobody else. There are many other communities in Kenya. There are many other communities in Myanmar that if there was a gospel preacher trained and ready with some backing to go today, that people could be reached with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so is the case in many, many places all over the world. I cannot assume that if I don't go that God will send somebody else. You remember that that's when God got angry at Moses. He, Moses said, Lord, send by the hand of whom thou wilt send. Send somebody else to Pharaoh. And that's when God became angry with Moses. He was patient with him up to that point. But he got angry with Moses at that point when he said send somebody else now listen to me today there are people in Sumter that I can't reach that you can and vice versa there are people in this town if somebody doesn't go to the trouble of in, uh, engaging them and inquiring about their soul and being willing to share the gospel with them they will go out of eternity without trusting Jesus as Savior this is real this is not television and I am telling you today that if we do not as a church family come together as in our missions conference later this year and take seriously what we're about to do and, and understand the importance of being willing to pray and being willing to give so that we can send missionaries around the world, if we are not obedient to those commands, there will be eternal implications. We cannot assume that someone else will step in. Will those missionaries eventually probably get to the field? Yes, they probably will, but they'll get there later and for some it will be too late it will be too late because it is commanded because we owe a debt because no one else will go the fourth thing I want you to see very quickly today is we have to go because they will not come as a matter of fact in many cases they cannot come Matthew chapter 4 Jesus came walking by the Sea of Galilee and saw Simon Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting their nets into the sea. He said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And straightway they left their nets and they followed him. Jesus said, fellas, I want you to come with me because I want to make you fishers of men. That's what a soul winner is. He's a fisher of men. It's what a missionary is. He's a fisher of men. Now, how many of you like to fish? How many of you really enjoy fishing? How many of you like getting in a boat and going fishing? Amen? Yeah. Okay. Can you imagine waking up on a Saturday morning and saying, man, I want to catch some fish. And going out on the front porch and sitting down and waiting for the fish to come in. It's not going to happen. You got to go to all that trouble, man. You got to get your tackle together, got to get your gear together, you got to make sure your boat's ready to go, you got to make sure it's gassed up and ready to go, you got to make sure everything's right. And you got to drive at least a little piece, most of us, to get to a place where you can put that boat in the water. And what do we, what, what do we say? Let's go fishing. You don't stay home fishing, you go fishing, amen? Jesus called them to a work that intrinsically involves going. He says, I'm going to make you fishers of men. And I'm going to tell you what, we can't just sit on the front porch at home and wait for the souls to come in. 
We can't come to the church and just sit at, stand at the door ready to shake hands and wait for the lost souls to come in. If we do not go out and reach them, if we do not go out and tell them, if we do not share the gospel at every opportunity that the Lord gives us, then they will not be reached. The reason we have to go is they won't come. Man is not conditioned to come to Jesus Christ in his sin nature. He's conditioned to run from him. Adam had sweet, had sweet communion with the Lord before sin came in. He had fellowship with the God and way in a way that none of us to this day ever have and won't until we go to heaven and then when after he sinned God came into the garden looking for Adam and Adam hid himself he ran from his God and that's what this world is doing today friend they're running from this God if you want to reach them you got to go chase them down it's true men do not just automatically come to Jesus you have to take Jesus to them, Paul saw that Macedonian call. He wanted to go further up into Asia, and the Holy, Holy Ghost forbid him. He saw that Macedonian call, saw a vision over in Macedonia of a man saying, Come, come and help us. And he crossed over and went over into Eastern Europe to Philippi and on down into Corinth and Athens and all those other cities down there on that side of the sea and opened up the gateway for the gospel to go all across Europe. And from Europe, it made its way to North America. And you and I have the gospel today. But it was because Paul said, I can't wait for them to come. I've got to go to them. Lastly, I want you to notice this and we'll be done today. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, the Bible says, For he saith, I have heard thee in an accepted time, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I want to say to you today, we have to go because it is time. It is time. It is time for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to stop sitting around and talking about world evangelism and get busy about world evangelism. It is time for us to stop talking about the fields wide unto harvest, but the laborers are few, and do something about that. It's time for us to pray and seek God's will. It's time for us to be willing to give. It's time for us to be willing to go. If we will not go to Sumter, how can we in good conscience ask a man to sell everything he's got, give up everything of his life that he's known up to this time, leave his extended family in time and, and behind and go to a place that doesn't know anything about him, that is scared to death of him, that he is scared to death of because cultures and languages and everything are different. How in the world can we in good conscience try to send people across the ocean to do what we are refusing to do here. It's time for us to not just think about and not pray about and not talk about reaching the lost. It's time for us to understand that I have to go because it is time. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. I think sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that there is some mythical perfect time. We wait for circumstances to all line up. We wait for the perfect moment to sort of sneak up on somebody with the gospel. Friend, there's not a bad time to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You may have to be more creative in some environments. You, have to make, you may have to change how you present it in certain situations to make it appropriate to the setting. But I'm going to tell you, if we wait till the perfect time to tell people about Jesus, we'll never tell anybody about Jesus. The fact of the matter is, there is no bad time because now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is when God is calling men to himself because tomorrow may be too late. Tomorrow they may be dead. Tomorrow the trumpet may have sounded and the church may have already been raptured out. Tomorrow may be too late for them. It is time. And I want to say to you today that if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as Savior, the Bible tells us about a man that the Apostle Paul preached to. In Acts 24, 25, to Felix, he reasoned of righteous temperance and judgment to come. He told Felix about all that. And Felix, the ruler, trembled, the Bible tells us. And he answered this. Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call thee. Just as there is no perfect time for a Christian to later present the gospel to someone they're afraid to today, I want to say to you, if you are here today and you've not trusted Jesus Christ, there will never be another day or time that will be a better time and moment for you to trust Jesus Christ than this day. 
Let me explain to you what happens and we'll pray and close. Here's what happens. Every time you reject Christ, it gets a little easier to reject Christ. Have you noticed that? If you're a person who has trouble saying no and has had to learn to say no, have you noticed that the first time you said no it was very hard, but about the 15th time you sort of got used to it, it wasn't as hard as it used to be? We become a little jaded. We become a little callous. The first time the convicting Holy Spirit of God steps into your life and shows you that you're a sinner and causes you to understand that without Him you are lost for eternity and you have no hope, I'll tell you what, your heart may be tender, it may beat out of your chest, the tears may come to your eyes, you may be scared to death and, 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 and you may even run from it because you're just not even used to having something affect you that way. But I'll tell you this, if you run from it that time, it'll probably not be that way the next time. It'll get easier and easier and easier to say no, and you will never find a convenient season more convenient than today to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. By the way, let me ask you this. Why would you run from Him? Why would you run from Him? He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Do you understand this today? That you really don't even have to run to Him. If you'll just stop running from Him. He's seeking you today. He's reaching out to you today. He's right here with His nail scarred hands saying, Come, just come here. Just come here. Just stop running from me. I died for you. I love you. I want to save you. I want to help you. He's there waiting for you today. He came to you. He left heaven. And came for you. And if you've not trusted him today, I want to plead with you this morning. Don't leave here without him looking for a better day. Now's the accepted time. Now is the day for Christians to get busy about reaching the lost. And now is the time and this is the day for the lost to stop running from their Savior and embrace him today. Believe on him and be saved. Let's bow for prayer. Father, thank you for the time today. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for speaking to our lives Thank you for this precious gospel. It is the message above all messages. And it is the message that is worthy of us giving our life to see to it that it gets to a lost and dying world. Lord, we do have to go. I pray that you'll help us to understand the necessity of it today. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed this morning all across the auditorium for just a moment, please. Maybe you're here today and if you'd be totally honest in these few moments of invitation time, you'd have to say this, Pastor, I want to be saved. I want to be forgiven. But the truth is, if I died today, I don't know for sure that I'm saved. And I'm concerned about it. I understand you told me Jesus died for me today and that He wants to save me, that He bore the burden of my sin. I may not even understand it all just yet, but I know this. I need Jesus today. I don't know for sure that I am saved, but I'd like to know. Right there where you sit, would you just slip your hand up today? Others are not looking around right now, but I am. I'll see it, and I'll be praying for you. won't come to you and embarrass you, but I will pray for you. Anybody like that today that you'd lift your hand as a testimony? Pastor, pray for me. I don't know for sure that I'm saved, but I need to get it settled. I'd like to have it settled. Anyone? Christian, maybe God's speaking to your heart today. I think we've seen some pretty compelling reasons from the Word of God, five of them today, why Jesus said and why we need to obey His command of go ye. There is not a better or another way to do this. It's God's plan. We will not improve on it. What we need to do is get in on it. What we need to do is become a part of it. If God's spoken to your heart today, we're going to stand in just a moment, and Brother Chris is going to sing a verse of invitation ta- song when he does. If God's speaking to your heart today. Why don't you make this a point of surrender, Lord? I'll go. I'll go here. I'll follow your direction. You'll show me what you want me to do in the days ahead. I'll invest in missions. I'll pray. I will go here, and I will go through others around the world. But, God, I want to do my part. I want to do what I can to make sure that everyone hears the gospel in my generation here and there, all around the world. If God's spoken to your heart this morning, I hope you'll come. As we stand all across the auditorium right now, Brother Chris is going to sing a verse of the invitation. Won't you come today? Let him have his way this morning. I don't wait, Lord, have I no way. Thou art the pond.
I didn't mention it much during the message, but I want to say this too. We need to be willing to go there as well. It's wonderful to invest in foreign missions, but God may speak to someone's heart here in the days ahead about you being a missionary, about you going. And I want to encourage you. You surrender to the Lord. You do what He tells you to do. There is nothing more exciting than being involved in the business of getting the Word of God out. It's not easy work, but you've never done anything in your life that you'll be happier that you did than you will be doing this. If God's speaking to your heart today, I hope you'll mind the Lord and do what He's telling you to. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. Amen. You can look this way. It's so good to see you in the Lord's house today. I hope that you'll plan on being in our service tonight. Our evening service is at 6 this evening. We will need to have a business meeting at the close of the service tonight. I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that before you go. Uh, so I hope you'll plan on being here for the service tonight. Now, because we didn't get to have a handshake early, I missed, earlier, I missed some folks. And if you're our guest today, please... It'll bother me this afternoon if I don't get to meet you. I'm just serious. It will. My wife will tell you. It'll aggravate me if I don't get to meet you. So at the close of the service, my wife and I will be back there in the foyer, and we'll be shaking hands with folks. Please come and let me at least shake your hand and get to meet you today. Um, Our folks know that if you walk up and say, excuse me, they understand that they are to part like the Red Sea and let guests get to the pastor, okay? So if you're our guest today, just say, excuse me. They'll step aside. Uh, I don't want you to leave because there's a lot of folks around me shaking hands, I want you to come right up through there, drive right up in the middle of the place like you own it, amen, and uh, we'll uh, we'll look forward to getting to see you and getting to know you. If you do have your visitor card filled out, uh, Brother William, if you'll raise your hand back there, he's going to be in the foyer out there as well, and he'll have a special gift that he wants to give you today. We've got a nice mug that we've got made up there. It's actually, a, it's not a mug, I don't know what you call that thing, a big old insulated tumbler, that's what that is, uh, and it'll keep that drink so cool, it'll give you brain freeze, I promise you it will, uh, or your money back. Every time you paid for it, we'll give it back to you. Uh, But uh, he's got one of those for you as you leave today, one for each of our visiting families, just as a way for us to say, God bless you and thank you for being with us, and we hope that you'll come and see us again soon. All right, Brother Chris, if you'll come, lead us in a word of prayer as we close today, and we'll look forward to seeing you back this evening. God bless you. Let's pray together. Father, it's been wonderful to be in your house this morning, Lord, and just implant within our hearts the urgency of the gospel message and how urgent it is to do our part, whether it be local, whether it be sending missionaries out, just help us to have that ambition and desire and just motivate us even now before the missions conference, prepare our hearts, Lord, to receive a great and mighty blessing that you'll have for us. We just pray for our missionaries that you bring them safely to us, Lord, and just we're, we're, our hearts rejoice to see these churches that are being built and to know we have some small part in that, Lord. We just pray now as we go our separate ways, you protect us, guide us, and direct our steps. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen.